All right, another thing that population ecologists like to talk about are survivorship curves. Survivorship curves are graphs that show the number or proportion of individuals surviving to each age for a given species or a group. They're constructed from a given cohort. A cohort is a group of individuals of about the same age. Um, and this information that is used to, to make these survivorship curves typically comes from a life table. Now we're going to talk about three specific kinds of survivorship curves, type one, type two, and type three. Type one individuals survive uh, well early in life and they generally live quite a few years. At an advanced age, near the end of their life expectancy, the death rate increases very dramatically and most of them die relatively quickly. Large mammals, like uh, elephants for example, even humans, typically are going to uh, have this type of survivorship curve. So here's a type one survivorship curve. Notice at the beginning of life, most of the organisms survive and make it. And that's because these organisms are usually providing a lot of uh, parental care to the organisms. But as the organisms age, for example, to somewhere around maybe 80-ish, between 70 and 80, the death rate, the mortality rate um, goes up dramatically and the organisms die off very quickly until they eventually reach uh, their maximum um, age range and it, by that point in time they're all dead. So again that's a type 1 survivorship curve that's the kind of survivorship curve we would see in people, elephants, large mammals. All right, in a type 2 survivorship curve individuals have a death rate that's relatively constant throughout their whole life expectancy. These kinds of curves are exhibited by lizards, the hydra, um, some small mammals along the way, also some birds. So notice here, the mortality rate is essentially constant throughout. We've got a, a straight line with a constant slope. Um, there's not a lot of parental care here at the beginning. So the, there's some deaths at the beginning of life and the death rate continues to be constant all the way to the end of the life expectancy. And then we talk about a type three survivorship curve. These organisms have um, a very low chance of survival at the beginning of life because their parents aren't really providing much parental care at all. Um, those that do make it may live to a fairly advanced age. This kind of survivorship curve is exhibited by lots of insects uh, and fish. So notice at the beginning in a type three, most of the organisms die before they reach any uh, measurable age. But if they make it, some of them live for a fairly long time until by the end of the life expectancy, they're all gone. So again, that's a type three survivorship curve. Let's also talk a bit about age sex structures. So age sex structures, also called age sex pyramids, graphically display um, a population by breaking it down into males and females and the number of males and females that are present at each age range. Usually the left side of the pyramid graphs the male population and the right, the female population. The x-axis displays the number of individuals of a particular age or a percentage of the population at that age. And the center of the pyramid starts at zero population and extends out to the left for males and right for females in terms of increasing size or proportion. Along the vertical axis, the y-axis, um, the HX pyramids display ages in usually five five-year increments from birth at the bottom all the way up to old age at the top. So here's an example of an age sex structure. Now this is from Gabon, which is a fairly poor country in Africa. So notice down at the bottom, we're looking at the zero to four age group. Here we have the female population and the male population. Notice in this particular pyramid, the base is very wide and the top of the pyramid is very small. Not very many people in Gabon, and in this case, are, are living to old age. There's a lot of young people. What this pattern shows you is that this population is gonna grow 
fast because there's lots of individuals down here that are about to reach reproductive age. So here's some other age sex structures. So this is, this is like the structure we saw in Gabon. Very wide at the base, very narrow at the top. That's where you're going to get rapid population growth. In other, um, other countries, maybe a little bit like the United States, you still may have a wide base, but the, uh, the middle and the top are much wider than they were over here. So here we're still getting growth, but the growth is slower because the, the reproductive age segment of the population is a smaller chunk of the population than it was over here in the rapid growth sex structure. Some age sex structures look more like this. This might be in a place like, say, Italy. Um, here, you've got sort of a cone-shaped age sex structure. And what that's saying is that, yeah, there's a lot of uh, people that are about to be reproductive age, but there's also a lot of people in here that are about to be um, non-reproductive. And there's a small part of the population that's, that's near death. So these are going to give you more of a stable zero population growth situation. There's even a few places on earth where the human population is shrinking. Japan would be an example. In this case, the pyramid's very wide in the middle. It's sort of tapered at the bottom and tapered at the top. These people are probably nearing the end of reproductive age. There's not nearly as many people coming up behind them to replace them. So the percentage of the population that's reproductive age is getting smaller and smaller across time, which means eventually the population is going to shrink. So again, these age sex structures allow ecologists to make some predictions about what's going to happen to the, the population size in the future.